morning and welcome to Rising. Happy Monday. We are back in our usual studio, for better or worse. I don't know if it's still haunted. There's ghosts somewhere. I think I was hoping they were going to do an exorcism to make sure <laughs> everything's fine. All the things that we want are in the studio, yes. yeah. Little by little, Robbie. It'll be just in time for after the election. <laughs> People can calm down, breathe. We'll get to the least, I guess, less important stuff. You think there'll be a day where we all calm down? No, I don't. I, don't. Ever I mean, I, if I were the next president, I would have a national day of calm. Mm. Just a little meditation in everybody's day. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, that's the platform we'll be running on here at Rising. Let's get into our top news story. Democrats are entering full panic mode over Elon Musk. No chill there. Pennsylvania Democratic Governor Josh Shapiro called on law enforcement to potentially investigate Elon over his promise to give away $1 million every day until the election. Now, to be clear, here's what Musk is planning to do. He's giving $1 million each day to someone who signs an online petition that reads, quote, the First and Second Amendments guarantee freedom of speech and the right to bear arms. By signing below, I am pledging my support for the First and Second Amendments. To be eligible for the million dollars, those who sign must be registered voters and live in one of the seven swing states. The petition also offers $100 to each registered Pennsylvanian voter who signs, and $100 if you refer a registered Pennsylvanian voter, a friend, to sign. Here's one of the lucky winners, John Dreher. Hey, my name is John, and uh, I came here to, to see Elon Musk and support Trump to be the next president. And, uh, you know, just see everyone in person, attend a great rally, and uh, see a lot of patriots together. You know, when he called me, I, the first thing that happened, uh, you know, I, I screamed, and uh, it was a million dollars, and I was pumping my pumping my check in the air, you know, pumping my arms in the air. And I, I went up and it, actually meeting Elon, I, I kind of forgot about the money for a little bit uh, since he's such an influential figure. You know, for, for guys my age who, who are working hard every day, and you know, it's important, it's really important to get out and vote. To date, Musk has given away $75 million to America PAC, which supports Donald Trump. As a reminder, Trump said if elected, he would establish a government efficiency commission with Musk at the helm. So it makes sense why we've seen so much of Musk on the campaign trail in recent days. But the reason Democrats are concerned over Musk's million dollar incentives is because it could be illegal. For context, it's a federal crime to pay people with the intention of inducing or rewarding them to cast a vote to get registered. Take a listen to Pennsylvania Democratic Governor Josh Shapiro. You are a former attorney general. Is this legal? I think there are real questions with how he is spending money uh, in this race, how the dark money is flowing, uh, not just into Pennsylvania, but apparently now into the pockets of Pennsylvanians. Um, that is deeply concerning. Look, Musk obviously has a right to be able to express his views. He's made it very, very clear that he supports Donald Trump. I, I don't, obviously we have a difference of opinion. Uh, I, I don't deny him that right. But when you start flowing this kind of money into politics, I think it raises serious questions that uh, folks may want to take a look at. So you think it might not be legal, yes or no? I think it's something that law enforcement could take a look at. And that was vague. Musk explained his push into politics over the weekend. Let's hear what he had to say. I don't want to be in politics. I want to be clear. <laughs> that is not my preference. I, 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 like, I just like building stuff. I, I like building products that people love. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I... I, I derive joy from seeing people enjoy the products that my companies make. Um, so, I, I like making products people love, and that, that, that's what I normally like doing, and I, and I, and I, I actually don't like politics at all. <laughs> I hate politics. <laughs> but, 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 but the stakes are so high here that I I have had no choice but to uh, take a stand. Wasn't just Shapiro panicking over Musk's million dollar prizes. Twitter personality Ron Filipkowski wrote, quote, I don't understand why Elon Musk can't simply advocate and campaign for Trump on the merits of the man and his ideas rather than resorting to fake websites and texts, impersonating the Harris campaign to deceive voters while holding daily million dollar 
lotteries for supporters. Another Twitter influencer, Will Stansel, said, quote, I'm telling you the scale of Elon's intervention into this election is without precedent. He's pushing every envelope, running the Trump field operation, buying votes with million dollar lotteries, flooding house races with cash, even AI generated ads. He goes on to say there appears to be no ethical or legal boundary Elon won't push with unfathomable wealth behind it. Boo hoo, all those poor little tears. Um, look, Elon supports Donald Trump. He's made no secret of that, obviously. Uh, I, it is not illegal to um, give people money at random to sign a petition. Um, so that is, it is. definitely it's not lottery. illegal. They're not doing no, no, they're anything doing wrong. The lottery. So the reason why he's able to get away with this, and yes. it's still questionable because it's unprecedented. I mean, it's questionable it's because Democrats want to criminalize everything. But Well, no, we have, we have campaign finance laws for a reason. Otherwise, you know, people could, corporations could fund election, uh, fund candidates directly. But we do have some well, Now they just fund them barriers. indirectly. <laughs> They just fund them indirectly. They're still funding them. It's they're just, still funding them. There's an extra shouldn't. step. There's an extra step. And he is trying to skirt that extra step. And the question is whether or not that's legal. They don't know for sure. But the loophole is that he's doing it through a lottery system. Mm -hmm. His super PAC, which he founded, but he is not an actual officer of, which is important. You know, I have an officer in LLCs and companies. Mm -hmm. So he's not the treasurer or the president. So he's technically not like legally responsible to this PAC, which is really important too, because if he were, that would be a major violation because super PACs cannot, and outside organizations cannot directly coordinate with a campaign. Right. So this is how he can put money into a PAC and then go on the campaign stage with Donald Trump and get away with all that. He's, he's, he might get a fine, right? He might get a fine before the election, after the election, but of course he can afford it. And if it is more serious, if anything he's doing is more serious, and I'm sure people are looking into it, it'll happen after the election. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes to show you how silly a lot of these campaign finance laws are. I know the idea of getting money out of politics is very appealing to a lot of people of different ideological bents. I understand it. I particularly don't like the level of influence that um, that businesses, unions, et cetera, can buy with the money they give to candidates. But what we did was just instead of directly giving it, now you do the PAC. It's but it's they indirectly coordinate with the campaigns, and we haven't solved the problem at all. We've just made it. Um, what which we've done is create a class of DC insidery people whose job is to still, you know, facilitate the exchange of those lobbying dollars. They just now they understand the laws and the loopholes, and it's slightly more difficult. And it actually, I think, ends up entrenching people who understand the ins and outs of the system a bit better. Makes it harder for the common man to participate in the political process. But this goes to show, I mean, the, uh, how can you see it as anything other than like the, a full anti-Elon panic among among Democrats and journalist people? Like, whatever. Trump has a big, wealthy, powerful supporter. Kamala Harris has a lot of those too. Donald Trump has a lot of those. Joe Biden has a lot of those. There's nothing new about it. She took a picture with Alex uh, Soros the other day. Yeah, but Alex Soros is he? He runs a foundation. He doesn't run a pack, and he's, <laughs> you know, and he's a grandchild. Listen, he he. They invest in humanitarian uh, organizations all around the world. I think the concern with Elon Musk is that he's weaponizing a tool that we all used to use for discourse. It's not illegal, but he's weaponizing X. He is. He's skirting a lot of laws. Now, I say what you will about super PACs creating these cottage industries and, and also hiding donors, by the way, because a lot of the donors in super PACs and 501c4s are not disclosed, right? It's very hard to trace the money. So that's a concern, whereas before, even with our weakened campaign finance rules before Citizens United, there were still limits on contributions to political parties and to candidates. Now you can circumnavigate that through a super PAC. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I mean, we need... We need we need supreme uh, campaign finance reform and, frankly, public financing because we can afford it. We have all this excess money sitting around in places, and I know you, you take all that waste that does exist. There's absolutely waste, without a doubt. We have the Government Accountability Office, and let's put it into public financing. I mean, Donald Trump doesn't want to raise money. He doesn't want to put his own money in, and I'm sure billionaires don't want to put their own money in. So why not give it a fair shot, and everybody gets the right to... My, my, my contrarian response to that is... I think that as long as what the government does is extremely, as long as the government is big and powerful and there's a lot it can do to help or hurt specific interests, specific firms, as long as that is the case, those firms or interest groups will find ways to spend their money for political purposes, no matter how, and you can make it more difficult and you can make it more complicated and they will still find ways as they did under our existing campaign finance structure that we all don't like. So my solution would not be to actually even try to stop 
firms, special interest groups, from spending their money this way, but to have what the government does be less important to how they run their businesses, and then they won't bother spending money because it doesn't influence them. As long as it's, as long as it's winner take all, big and vast, at the right. federal level, there will be interest groups feeling like they need to spend money on this thing. Listen, it happens in New York City. We have a public finance system in New York City, and now at the state level, this is the first year we're going to uh, deal with it at the state level, where uh, if, you if, if you raise a certain amount of money under um, $250 in New York City or state, you, uh, you get either $8 in New York City or $12 at the state level from, from the public. But of course what happens is this is a handout to consultants, and if you are an interest group, sometimes, because we have ranked choice voting in New York City, they'll run multiple candidates to play off of each other, and it's really kind of old-fashioned Tammany Hall, still rewards the consultants, it still rewards the interest groups, it might be more fair, and an, it, it is a good system, I think, to level the playing field, so Michael Bloomberg, I mean, people can still come in, like opt out of the system, like Michael Bloomberg, and still use their own personal money to buy an election. So it's not loophole free, but it is definitely easier to be a normal person and run for office. With that being said, the federal level for, for president and Senate, let's just, let's just have a campaign period. Mm -hmm. We really didn't need this extra time. Do you remember two weeks ago, you and I were just tired of the same campaign arguments, and we're all like, all right, undecided is just I'm tired decide. today. I'm tired of it. Now we're in the final stretch, so there's like spicy stuff happening, but you I really don't tired. need elections this long. Yeah. It's it's a it's going to be an over billion dollar on her side. Kamala Harris. They keep saying one point two billion dollars, yeah. and that doesn't count PACs. They, on his side, it's probably way more with PACs. They keep saying, you know, if your candidate doesn't win, this is going to be the last election. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> Could it? it on don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> All right, we've got a lot more to get to on Rising today. Uh, we're going to talk about the McDonald's photo op. Stay tuned. More of the show up next. <laughs>